Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Talking Sass. And thank you guys so much for joining me. Every week I talk about how spectacular my guests are. And this week, no exception, of course. But before we talk about that guest, let's talk about patreon.com slash sassy stuff. You guys knew that was coming. You know the spiel by now. Starting at only $2, you guys are going to get great, amazing, exclusive content to Patreon only. So make sure you guys go and check that out. And from there, the tiers go up, which get even more exclusive content. So again, check that out. It's patreon.com slash sassy stuffy. Now, if you want to follow along on Instagram and Twitter, I love new followers. So come hang out with me. It is at sassy stuffy on both of those platforms. Now, if you're watching on YouTube or you're, wa- or you're listening rather on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to hit subscribe. And also, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you never miss a second of talking sass. And also, if you are listening on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to rate and review Talking Sass with five stars. And also, if you do review, I really love to read those on the show. And I haven't had any recently. So make sure you guys go and do that so I have some more cool things to read or say on the opening of the show, okay? Now, on to today's guest. I am so excited. This girl started training at such a young age. She's only 19 now, but she has been labeled a prodigy within professional wrestling. She is the first woman to receive a ticket to the gold for Ring of Honor's women's tournament. And this week, of course, the brackets were announced on uh, ROH, and she's going to be going up against Sumi Sakai, which is definitely a huge, huge match for her. I mean, she's so young in her career, and Sumi Sakai has so much experience such a lovely person. Both of them are extremely lovely. And I'm so excited to get to talk to her. This here is Roxy. Hey, Roxy, how's it going? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for joining me. I know we had a little time issue earlier, but we got that all worked out. (laughs) You got (laughs) happen. It happens with different time zones and different areas of the world yeah. time zones there anyway but it is it's crazy trying to book people on zoom it's so much easier when you can just do it in person at like a show or whatever but you know right now I'm in Canada and I can't even cross the border so <laughs> no real inter- oh, yeah. so yeah <laughs> but luckily we're at the end of this whole nightmare at least it seems that way so. Yeah, there's like we're like seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Exactly. It's so <laughs> great because like for like the last I started nine months ago. So like nine months, it's like, so how's it going? What are you doing while you're at home? Because <laughs> <It's stuck. laughs> right? everybody's stuck at home for the most part, unless you live in certain areas of the country. I know they had a little bit more freedom than others. But yeah, I had to stop and think. I'm like, I'm totally not just sleeping all day. <laughs> <laughs> Me either, but <laughs> oh, Canada was really hard. In yeah. Quebec, we had like a um, a curfew, that's what it is, at nine o'clock. So like you couldn't even leave your house after nine o'clock. Like mm. let's say I wanted to go to the store and get something. Nope, can't do it. Yeah, but, that's how it was in uh, my hometown. Uh, yeah. I don't live there anymore, but when I was living there, it was like that. Because I know here in Houston, they didn't have a curfew. But uh, in Laredo, they had a curfew. I think it was like, I, f- I think it was around like seven or eight, something like that. But yeah. Yeah. See, our earliest one was eight o'clock. So like mm. everything like kind of closed at like seven, seven thirty, except for like gas stations and like things that needed to be open for people who had essential jobs. But that was about it. So yeah, I'm just I'm just upset because. Uh, the gyms are still not open 24 hours they still oh. close at like 10 and I'm like what like they're like oh guys you don't have to wear masks anymore but it's not open 24 hours yet <laughs> the, you know what I never understood about these curfew things and especially like a gym okay it's weird to me like you say you don't have to wear a mask but we're gonna close at 10 like what does COVID go out and like party at 10 That's o'clock? What I'm, saying. <laughs> I'm like, what? Is it just like, oh, okay, everybody's in their house. Let me come out now. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd never understood that. I'm like, you would, 
let's say the majority of people anyway in their daily lives are probably not out Monday through Thursday, Sunday through Thursday, maybe because they have normal jobs or they're going to school or whatever. So you would think there's less likely of a chance of coming in contact with a person who has COVID after those hours anyway. But I mean, I digress because that would be a whole podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) We're like, anyway. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Well, let's talk about you because obviously that's why we're here. (laughs) And like, I've done a little bit of research on you and I'm just like amazed. You're 19 years old, correct? Yes. And you started training at 13 years old. Like to me at 13, I'm a teenager. I'm going to the mall. I'm hanging out. Of course, I'm watching wrestling at night or whatever, but I'm not thinking about wrestling or training. I mean, I was a cheerleader at the time, but like nothing that I would want to do professionally. In fact, I didn't start wrestling. I was 20 to my first match I think. so I mean there's quite a bit of difference between 13 yeah and you go through a lot of a lot of uh, life changes in that time so what was it like for you being 13 what made you decide to go into professional wrestling um I've always wanted to be a wrestler since I was probably like since I could remember honestly <laughs> um I think around like the age of 10 I was like okay I'm gonna be a wrestler when I'm older and everybody was just like okay sure like my parents were like it's probably just a phase but it wasn't (laughs) um and yeah uh at first all I knew was like WWE I didn't know there was um like an independent circuit so there is actually a local wrestling promotion in my hometown that I didn't know about but my stepdad he was like friends with I think one of the wrestlers Mm -hmm. um that wrestled there and he's like, oh, like, I'll take you to one of the shows. And so we went and like, I just fell in love with it. I was like, oh, this is so cool. You can actually like, I can just wrestle in my hometown. Like, uh, I didn't think it was like actually that possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I started helping out there. Uh, so like my dad introduced me to like the wrestlers and then like the promoter. And uh, I actually started off as like, I can't remember exactly what it's called but those people that like go and like get the ring jackets from the ring and then take them to the back that's what I did at like 11 years old I was just doing that yeah and I thought I was the coolest ever for doing that yeah (laughs) Um, definitely and then so I did that and then um and then I started off as a ref when I started training so when I was about like 11 uh I would like bug my mom all the time and I'm like I just want to start training like can you ask that promoter if I can train with them she's like okay I'll ask and so she asked and they were like oh she's a little too young like put her into cheerleading or tumbling or something that would help her and so that's what I did uh I got put into cheerleading which helped a lot uh because they do a lot of like roles and like a lot of like agility stuff and that definitely helped me. So then when I turned 13, I was bugging her again. And she's like, okay, let me ask again. So she asked again and they were like, okay, bring her in. Um, so yeah, I started training with them. My first trainers, uh, their names are George Benavides and Johnny Angel. Um, they didn't let me uh, step into like a ring to have a match until I had like, I think a year and a half of like full training where I was just doing like rolls and bumps and like just like perfecting the basics. Mm-hmm. Um, but while I was doing that, I was refing. I was refing matches. Um, so I was like a huge fan of AJ Lee at the time. And yeah, like she I used to do about that. Yeah. <laughs> she used to do like uh she used to like do that thing where they had like that storyline, she like refed matches, and I was like, Oh, this would be so cool. So I had like my little converse on and I made my outfit like kind of cute. <laughs> And I was, like, having the time of my life, like, just refing. Um, and, yeah, I did that for about, like, a year and a half. And then um, I was a part of this team with my trainers called What a Team. <laughs> and basically, we were just all wearing, like, Whataburger shirts. And we were just called What a Team. And everybody loved it just because they're like, oh, Texas, we love Whataburger. Yeah. Um, so I was, like, a manager. So I feel like I kind of like was able to do everything. 
Mm-hmm. And that kind of helped me like a lot now because I was able to, you know, I didn't get to like have my first match until like a year and a half, but I was refing and then I got to manage and then I got to like go and take the wrestler's gear and take it to the back and stuff like that. And like it just all made me fall like keep falling in love with the wrestling like even more. Um, and yeah, and then I, uh, I actually stopped wrestling for about a year when I got into high school. Um, because I was like, okay, well, like, uh, I want, I can't really, like, do much with wrestling right now, like, mm-hmm. can't get signed anywhere or anything, because I'm 13. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, when I was a freshman, I joined the junior varsity soccer team, uh, but I was, like, so busy with that, that I could never go to wrestling training, uh so after that year I just didn't do soccer the rest of my high school years and I just went back to wrestling and yeah I just kept with that and now now I'm here (laughs) that's amazing because you got to go through all these different aspects of professional wrestling that maybe someone who hasn't doesn't understand like for me a lot of times I was never a referee I mean I did it a few times here there but nothing like seriously But like, I feel I always respected my referees, like I always, you know, wanted to get them involved because in a singles match, you have obviously the two opponents, but that referee is so important in telling your story if you include them. Yeah. You know, for you to have and understand how important the ref is, especially at such a young age, that to me is like just brilliant on every level, (laughs) you know, did the wrestlers, I mean, obviously you were probably working both male and female matches at that time. Did they respect you even though you were like 13 years old working a match with them? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I actually, when I first started, I wasn't really wrestling girls much. I think I wrestled maybe like one because there wasn't many at all in my area. Um, Mm -hmm. So I was just wrestling guys all the time. I was just training with just guys. Um, But my two trainers I'm like so thankful for them uh George and Johnny because they always took me so seriously since I first stepped in there like they could have easily been like oh she's a 13 year old little girl like whatever but they took me they took me so seriously and they didn't treat me any different than they like treated the guys there um which I have always appreciated because I felt like I would have been such a different wrestler if I hadn't been treated like that like I would have been such a different wrestler now Um, and uh yeah like they're the reason I think they're the reason why a lot of the other like all the other guys took me seriously there because they were just like hey like uh she's a she's a girl but she's a wrestler and you guys are going to treat her like she's a wrestler and so yeah like there is never any disrespect um I think I there's like a few stories just of where like people from like out of town we're like right by the border so a lot of the time like some luchadors would come over mm-hmm. and I think I remember like one time uh, I was actually a ref and there is these two luchadors and they came to me and I was gonna ref their match and they were like hey like we're gonna do a spot where like uh they he I forgot exactly what it was but he's like I'm gonna end up kissing you and I was like uh like I'm 13 and he's like oh it's okay it'll be quick and I was like what how does that where's the logic in that and I like just went to my trainer and I was like hey this happened and he like stopped that real quick and I didn't end up uh, like doing that match yeah but he like totally like stopped it and like they always took care of me and yeah I was super super grateful for that Definitely. Cause I mean, I know we don't have to go into obviously the details, but I know last year when we had the speaking out moment, you yes. had a little thing that you had been involved in. Like I said, we don't have to go all there. We want to be positive <laughs> here. But like it, it must've been hard for somebody. I mean, obviously you're a beautiful lady, you know, so to have all these men that are constantly around you, cause you said, you know, you barely got to work with any women in the beginning of your career that had to be very difficult being a teenager coming into the business and having to deal with some people like that, which luckily, knock on wood, hopefully we're moving in a better direction now since the speaking out moment. (laughs) No, yeah, for sure. But did you have like 
I mean, obviously that moment aside, did you obviously, did you have other issues with males within the business? Um, I feel like it was mostly like fans, mm -hmm. which um, it's kind of like every time I think about it, it makes me a little sad that it's like, oh, like, yeah, we get all these weird like DMs and weird interactions with like older men. And we just kind of have to like deal with it because, you know, it comes with the business. And I kind of think about it. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of sad. But like, it's kind of like you really it's really important to like be aware of that especially me getting in so young because mm -hmm. I think like honestly the first um like inappropriate message I got from a fan I was like 14 and I remember yeah it was like on my Instagram and I remember going to my mom and being like oh my god like like what is this like this is, I just got sent this to me and she was just like oh like she couldn't really like she didn't really know what to do just because it's like my daughter really wants to wrestle but like, this is also a little problem. And it was just like, like I said, just having like my two trainers when I first started, because they never really left my side uh, when I first started uh, wrestling. Like all those years that I first started wrestling that I was like a minor, they were always there. Um, so yeah, that's like super important. But uh, with like wrestlers, not really. Um, just like that instant, um, that instance with, you know, <laughs> but um. Yeah, it was mostly just like fans, which is like, you know, comes with the business. But, yeah, but while we're on it, fans, please don't be creepy, especially yeah. for, like, <laughs> younger women coming into the business. Like it can be much like me. I'm I'm a bit older. I wrestled for 12 years and now I've been out for about two or three. So, you know, 15 years of experiencing it. It's like, OK, it comes with the territory. But if somebody's coming in very young and impressionable and stuff like that and just be cool yeah and, for sure you know I, mean, I I really like I when that whole um like incident happened when like the speaking out movement started happening and then I kind of remembered like what the situation I was in I was like I honestly thought about it for a while and I was like I was like should I speak out on it should I just keep it to myself and it was like really really hard but like what I what really like kind of made me feel even like sadder was just thinking about all the younger people that I've like met that are like I want to be a wrestler and like I know there's like this uh 15 year old little girl her name's Mia Friday and she's just starting like to come up uh in Texas and I thought about all of that and I was just like like I would never want them to like go through one of those incidents that like I went through like ever like because like you know like these little girls just come into wrestling and all they want to do is just wrestle and like they don't even think that something like that could happen and I was like you know what like I feel like if anything like just like sharing my story will just kind of like it'll just make everyone more aware and kind of help this younger generation that hopefully they won't go through any of that stuff just because like I was able to like share my story and be like hey this happens like cut it out yeah definitely I mean that was such a big movement for professional wrestling especially for women in professional wrestling because I mean I can't probably count how many times somebody was inappropriate whether it's fans or other workers or whatever within my time in the business. And like, I just kind of blew it off because that was kind of what was expected sometimes. Yeah. And that was, that's disgusting to even have that train of thought, but that's mm -hmm. what it was. And now, like I said, hopefully with things getting back to normal, things will be a lot better for women within locker rooms. Oh, but that's, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you could go off off the rails and just talk True. about the inappropriateness and it's not just with wrestling it's it's across the world with everything that women and men you know do together but let's get back talking about wrestling and more what you've done so you trained with these two guys George and uh what did you say Johnny Johnny George and Johnny so they've trained you for quite a bit of time and then how did you get involved with Booker T school? So uh, I actually knew of Booker T's school since uh, forever ago. Uh, like <laughs> yeah. I said, I was always super serious about it. And I remember 
uh, there was this time that I was like searching up wrestling schools uh, on like my family computer and I found Booker T school and it was like in Houston which is only like six hours from I say only but it's about six hours from Laredo wrestling six hours right. nothing you jump in a right. car you're there you wrestle you come home I had- right <laughs> no I totally get it it's so funny because like I'll be like honey let's go here and he's like oh that's two hours away and I'm like we used to road like, for like 12 hours one yeah. show and then 12 hours home. What do you mean two hours is too far? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah two hours. So go ahead. Yeah. So it was about six hours for me. And I called over my mom and I was like, hey, like, look, there's a school and he has fantasy camps. Like maybe I can go to one during the summer. But when I turn 18 and I graduate high school, I want to move to Houston and start training to become a wrestler at Booker T's so I had it like planned out and my parents were just like yeah sure like that's what you want and that's what you're gonna do and um so yeah I uh I found that and then I think like I I was just like getting so much more serious about it like after that year that I took off I just started training a lot um uh and then I was like hmm I have like some time off from school like maybe I can go and like travel to Houston my my aunt and my uncle actually live here Uh, well I say here because I live here now but uh they live here and so I would like travel to Houston on like a greyhound and I would go train at Booker's like uh it was during like Christmas breaks and spring breaks so instead of like going, my friends hated me because like they wanted me to go out with them and go to the beach and stuff. And I was like, no, I'm going to go to training. Uh, so, yeah, I would go train there. And then uh, eventually I was just like put onto the shows. And yeah, that's kind of how I got started, which is so crazy to me because like I just remember the time that I like told my parents, oh, when I turn 18, I'm going to start training at Reality Wrestling to become a wrestler and like at 18 I was making history at reality wrestling by becoming their youngest diamonds champion which is just like I don't know it's very like it still gives me the chills like every time I like just speak it like actually speak it (laughs) because I'm just like it's so crazy no and it's it's actually you're such a great inspiration I mean you obviously we talked about the speaking out movement and now you're like hopefully other women don't have to experience the same things that you went through you're the youngest champion, the diamond champion there with Booker T's uh, promotion. It's like the things that you're doing at such a young age, you're so inspirational, I'm sure, to these girls who do know what independent wrestling is because now it's a little bit more popular than it was, say, back in 2007 when I got started, you know? So, I mean, it's amazing what you're doing at such a young age. Plus, like, it's like you found your passion already when it takes people many years of college to even figure out what job they want to do because they don't have a passion for anything yeah I always like wanted my I have like two like best friends that I've stayed friends with since like the beginning of high school um their names are Hin and Sarah and like they're super super 100% supportive of like my wrestling they're always at my shows and like cheering me on and uh I just always like I, I I felt like how much passion I had for wrestling and I just like always just like prayed like I hope they find like that passion for something like like something in their life that they're just so passionate about that they want to like you know go after something um and I I think about it like with my sisters too I have a little sister I have two little sisters um and I just always hope like I hope that they find something that they're just like so 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 passionate about um because it's such a good feeling you know definitely like me, I never thought I was going to be a wrestler. And then like, I started ring announcing on accident. And then from there, one of the guys, I started ring announcing everywhere. Cause at the time only Lillian Garcia was around and uh, a woman ring announcing was like a total novel thing, you know? Yeah. So like one guy was like, why don't you wrestle? And I was like, holy man, that's a great idea. I <laughs> of like, it. Oh. And then like, as soon as I took my first comp, I was like, oh my God, I love this. This is amazing. You know? So it is, it, it is, it takes people different times to find their passion. And, you know, sometimes you find it luckily like me accidentally, but I mean, for you <laughs> to have it at such a young age is amazing. And let's talk more about that because 
I mean, you've had so many wonderful opportunities, including, I mean, you've wrestled at 19 years old, you've wrestled people like Jazz, Sue Young, Priscilla Kelly, who's obviously in WWE now, Kylie Ray, Kimberly, Deanna Perrazzo. I mean, these women all have like such great histories behind them already. Some of them haven't been in long, but Jazz, who's been in for 20 plus years, you've wrestled. I mean, these aren't like small names that you're going up against. These are some of the, all the women, in fact, that I named are on TV currently. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it's, it's always been so crazy to me. I feel like every time I was given like this type of opponent, I was just like, it was just like a moment where I was just like, wait, like, uh, yeah, it was just always a moment where I was just like, wait, like, this is weird. Like I'm wrestling jazz. What? (laughs) Um, but yeah, I think like I I give like super big props to like the promoters because they're kind of the ones that are like believing in me that I can actually, you know, they could trust me with someone like that, mm-hmm. uh, like Deanna Frazzo and like Jazz and how you said like like Kylie Ray and like, it, but it kind of also proves that like I can I I, I am able to um, kind of wrestle at their level and like just because I'm you know 14 15 16 17 however old I am like I can go up against people like Jazz, Kylie Ray, Dion. Well I mean this is obviously why you have the name the prodigy in front of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk some more because another great opportunity that you have is you were the first woman to receive a ticket to the gold for ROH women's tournament. And I mean, that was after a tag match where Maria Canellis said that you stuck out compared to everyone else in that match. I mean, that's gotta be one of the greatest compliments. Yeah, yeah. I used to watch her like on TV when I was younger. So it's just like, even just like uh, the first time I like went to Ring of Honor and I just saw her, I was just like, <laughs> she is a god. <laughs> um, Amazing. She's so beautiful. Um, she is. And so confident, like, so, like, I don't know, her energy is just, like, uh. <laughs> I wrestled her once, too, when I was in Ohio. And, like, I sat, I think, I can't remember if it was before or after the match, after we, we were done. And, like, we talked about, like, everything she had done business-wise. Not just wrestling, but, like, behind the scenes and, like, working for, like, Celebrity Apprentice and stuff. like. And she does not get enough credit for how extremely intelligent she is as well. Like we're so used to the little ditzy character kind of on WWE and then you see her progressing now into this more intelligent character as she goes along, but like, she's brilliant. Yeah. And she's a mom. (laughs) I'm like, and she's a mom and she does all this stuff with Ring of Honor. I'm like, she's amazing. Yeah, I Um, I had her on the podcast recently. I was like, how do you balance all your time? And she's like, honestly, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, that's not like, because I remember like uh, when I was in like high school and I'd be doing these podcasts and people would be like, how do you handle everything? Like, how do you do like uh, like school? And I was also taking like college classes Mm -hmm. and like balancing like friends and wrestling and all of that. And I was like, I really don't know. <laughs> yeah, you like, just kind of got to go through with it. it. Like, you just like. <laughs> you just do it. Like when I was wrestling, I remember when I was in Ohio, I had two jobs. Plus I was wrestling on the weekends. Plus I was training on Wednesdays and Sundays with my trainer, which was two and a half hours away one way. So it's like, you just really don't think about it. You just kind of go through your own motions and yeah. hope that, you know, everything lines up perfectly and you get enough rest the night before. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got the first uh, ticket to gold, which was amazing. Um, I feel like that's another like really big moment just because it, it was like, it, okay, I was the first match to like, like, uh, what's it called? Like, it, it was like the rebirth of the women's division, the Ring of Honor women's division. Yeah. And then I got the first ticket to gold to like, their tournament the first women's tournament and like it was just like very crazy to me because I was just like wait like like I don't know I feel like I'm still like the same little girl in like my room like, like making out drawings of like uh gear and like characters and names and like now I'm just like wait this is actually like real like I actually have to like stop and kind of like soak it all in and be like hey like 
this is real this is actually happening like everything you like actually dreamt of when you were like 10 11 years old like it's actually like real this is happening <laughs> and this is only eight years later it's not like 25 years yeah later. You're that's what it's like manifesting your own destiny <laughs> yeah it's really crazy um but it, it's just like it makes me so happy because like I, i'm so happy where i am right now but i know that this is only like just a certain part of my story like like deep down inside me I know that I have like so much more oh definitely I can tell like the matches that I've seen on YouTube I obviously follow you on Twitter and Instagram as well like the way you handle yourself at 19 years old I definitely wasn't handling myself thank (laughs) god social media wasn't like as big as it is now (laughs) back then (laughs) so it's like it's amazing to see like your progress and like I had on Izzy Mania not that long ago and obviously she has a different route than what you've been going but like she's 13 years old right now had her first match at 11 and now you know she's doing like Muay Thai and kickboxing and all these things she's going about it but it's like it's it's so crazy because like when I broke into the business I'm not trying to make this about me but just kind of you know relating yeah we had Ring of Honor, and of course we had WWE, you know, but uh, Trish Stratus and Lita were around at that time, so we were getting better matches, just not like what we're getting now, like with Bailey and Sasha and Charlotte and everybody that's amazing in WWE, and then you have the Impact Knockouts, you have Ring of Honor Women's Tournament going on, you have the NWA Women's Tournament coming up as well. There's so it's much like, wrestling. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's great, because like, you I know that back then, and I mean, like, I had people that I looked up to like Cheryl and Melissa, you know, um, Allison Danger, Daisy Hayes, people like this. And it's like, now you guys that are coming into the business have so many more people that you guys can really look up to. And now yeah. you are going to be somebody that somebody else is looking up to. Like you already said, there's a couple of young girls that were looking up to you, you know, it's amazing. Like, oh God, I'm so jealous of <laughs> what you guys have now. I- <laughs> I just think it's so cool because especially like how you were saying there's so much wrestling and I feel like before there wasn't so there was like very little woman and you saw like all the male wrestlers that they were just like there is just a different different type of wrestler like every male wrestler and then it was just the woman they were just like in this box and it was just like they had to be this way they just had to be this way and now it's like literally there's so many women that you could just be whatever you want and yeah. like there's so many like it gives like a younger generation so many so many more opportunities because they can like kind of look up to it and be like oh look like there's so many different types of women's wrestlers I can be this now like it's really cool well like just going and saying that like probably when I was 13 I mean I don't remember exactly who was on tv but there was a lot of bra and panties matches there wasn't women's wrestling so maybe the reason why I didn't get into women's wrestling as much until I was in my 20s was because of that reason. You know, yeah. seeing real women's wrestling, I was, I mean, you occasionally have a breakout match here or there, but I mean, most of the time it was these silly gimmick matches, but still iconic in their own way in the Attitude Era, but not knocking them because they obviously have some no, yeah, athletic yeah. ability, of course, to be on TV doing those kind of things, but it's just like, now the athletic ability that the women have and are able to show and possess and the characters, like you said, that they can develop into whatever they want to be. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Like I remember, uh, well, clearly my favorite wrestler was AJ. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I kind of like, cause so at first, the first ever like uh WWE diva that I was like oh she's so cool it was uh, Kelly Kelly I thought she was like so gorgeous and she was just so athletic and she was just like amazing but I couldn't really like connect with her there's yeah. just something that I was just like like I can't be like her mm-hmm. but she's cool and then I saw AJ and like she just had like this whole like uh, like tomboy persona in like in her promos you could tell that like the way she was talking was like I have wanted this for so long and like now I am a WWE diva and it was like it's so cool because like that kind of is like what connects you to like wrestlers is like oh like they're just like me and they achieve their dreams so so can I and I feel like we just need a lot more of like those types of people that way like 
the younger generation can kind of like be inspired and be like oh well, I could do it too <laughs> yeah definitely and like you know like we said the amount of women's wrestling just on TV, I'm not even talking about the independent leagues, you know, that are out there, um, independent companies rather, out there like Shimmer. I mean, they're just basically on DVD right now. And I mean, you can't really find them on YouTube because Dave Prezak doesn't want that to happen. So it's like, just the women on TV, like it's so inspirational to see. I mean, I didn't mention AEW women's division either. Like Britt Baker's obviously killing it. Thunder Rosa on NWA and on uh, AEW killing it. I mean, these women are just knocking it out of the park. And like, I have like nothing but respect for every woman yeah. out there because obviously I've been a part of it, but like what they're doing right now is just on a completely different level than what I did when I was my first match, which is right here, this area here, you know, <laughs> 2007. It's just crazy the would you ever come back um I would but I'm pregnant with my second kid now oh so congrats thank you <laughs> so the likelihood of me coming back is probably very unlikely if I could do a spot show here or there I wouldn't be opposed to it but <laughs> well if you come back it's unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably unlikely but <laughs> let's talk some more about the women's tournament because obviously it's coming up very soon and I wrote down, I have 14 out of the 15 names of the people in the tournament. So I don't know who I'm missing, but I mean, you have so many great, amazing women. You have up and comers. You have these women who have been around like Angelina Love, again, 20 years, 20 plus years. You have Allison Kay, who has been in pretty much every major promotion that there is. You have Mandy Leon, who has been a part of Ring of Honor for many years. You have Nicole Savoy, a former Shimmer Women's Champion. I mean, this has got to be intimidating for somebody who is, I mean, you're not obviously just coming into the business, but, you know, to be coming into a tournament with these women of so much talent. I mean, Sumi Sakai, Holly Dead, Marty Bell, Willow Nightingale, um, Alex Gracia, Miranda Elise, Trisha Dore. I mean, these names are just amazing. To be a part of <laughs> um, I feel I feel confident. Um, just because like I I feel as if uh yes, like I am way younger than all of these women, but I feel like I've worked just as hard and uh I feel like a lot of times like people because I, I know like when when they announced me for the ring of honor tournament there was uh a lot of like people that were like oh um she's she's been able to like get so much success in such a short short amount of time and I'm like well not really like uh <laughs> right. I started when I was like 13 and like it was kind of hard just because I was like I was so serious about it but it, I got a little impatient just because it was like, well, nothing can really happen for me right now. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be 18. Yeah. Um, so now that, like, these things can actually happen, I'm just, like, putting my 100% into it because I'm like, okay, like, I've been working for so hard and, like, now I'm going to show everybody that, like, I have been working for so, for so long, so hard. And, like, yeah, I'm going to show everybody that in this tournament. That's great. You know what? I have a lot of friends in this tournament, but just sitting here talking to you and getting to see the passion that you have at such a young age, I really hope that you can go all the way with this because I <laughs> thank you be an inspiration to, you know, maybe people who are still in the business who don't have the passion that you do to maybe, you know, relight that that fire under them. And then the younger girls or people that maybe haven't even caught on to wrestling yet. You know, maybe this is the first time they see women's wrestling on, you know, this tournament, Ring of Honor's women's uh, wrestling tournament. And you inspire them in, in that way. Like, I just wish you the ultimate best in this because I just, I like, I can feel it. Even though I'm in Texas <laughs> and I'm in Canada, through, through the city, I can feel it, you know, and that's, that's something that a lot of people don't have. You know, like a lot of people say it's that it factor. And I feel like you have that 
just from talking to you. And I feel mm -hmm. like you're going to develop that even more. And it's just a matter of time before you just break through the universe and just show everyone everything you have. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead. Let's start wrapping this up. Why don't you tell everyone your social media, where they can find you and what you have coming up soon besides the yes. women's tournament. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I have the women's tournament coming up. Um, my social media, my Instagram is underscore ROKC. My Twitter is the Roxy underscore. And then my Facebook is the real Roxy. Um, I also have a YouTube channel, which I need to get better at posting on there but i have a couple of matches on there uh it's just roxy rok dash c awesome you have been such a delight to have on and once again all the best of luck in your career thank you so much okay until next time guys <laughs>